Hey everyone, Doug here with BNH, and today we're taking a moment to look at some upgrade options for MacBook users. Now, ever since Apple revamped the MacBook and MacBook Pro lines with their M1 and even more recently M2 processors, the question of whether it's time to upgrade your existing MacBook has come to the forefront in a very big way. The new M series processors have really made a splash in the last two years, but if we look at the 14 inch MacBook Pro, which we have right here, there's more going on here than you may have realized. The M series processors are an absolute game changer and they are by far the single biggest change in the current MacBook Pro lineup. Without getting too specific, they're based on ARM architecture so they're designed for low power consumption. But don't be fooled, unlike the processors you've probably seen in mobile devices, they're more than capable of desktop class workloads and performance. The M1 Pro we have in this 14 inch MacBook Pro is capable of 4K video editing, photo editing, retouching, music production, and thanks to that incredible mini LED screen here, which we'll get to in a bit, there's even the possibility of some color grading work. What's even more impressive though, is that due to its low power use, it runs cooler and lasts a lot longer than you typically see in a processor of this class. Apple claims up to 17 hours of video playback and up to 11 hours of web browsing over Wi-Fi, which is ample time to get you through the day before you need to charge. Compare that to the previous Intel version back in 2019, which claimed only 10 hours of video playback, and the difference in efficiency is staggering. Now, if you look at the actual hardware specs of the M1 Pro, it's more than just a powerful power sipping processor. There's a lot of unique design choices that give the processor extra assistance for specific tasks. To start, on the 14 inch model here, the CPU itself can be spec'd out to 10 cores, with the GPU maxing out to 16 cores. With a split performance and efficiency core design, that's eight and two respectively, the CPU can run at much lower power levels while it's idling or doing simple tasks. Looking at the 16 inch model though, you can add the even more powerful M1 Max, which doubles the GPU core count to 32 and the maximum RAM to 64 gigabytes. So when high demand applications are running, not only do those performance cores I mentioned kick in, but the shared memory between the CPU and GPU make for an extremely fast memory bandwidth of 200 gigabytes a second. Yes, gigabytes, which is crucial for things like 4K video editing or ultra high resolution photo editing. Now on the 16 inch max model, the doubled available RAM and GPU cores also then doubles the bandwidth to 400 gigabytes a second. Next up, developers, especially those in the field of machine learning, will get the most out of this feature. Taking inspiration from the iPhone and iPad, the M1 series also features a neural engine, which helps accelerate machine learning tasks. With more companies adding features for AI-assisted processing, it will be interesting to see how professional software takes advantage of this in the near future. Now over on the video side of things where the benefits are a little more tangible, the M1s also pack in dedicated hardware encoders and decoders for H.264, HEVC, and best of all, ProRes and ProRes RAW. This means that quite simply, the performance of these formats on the M1 series is almost unparalleled, especially in its class. Dedicated decoders means that the main CPU can be used for other tasks, but it also enables absolutely mind boggling workflows with Apple claiming up to 20 streams of 4K ProRes playing back simultaneously on a timeline. Thanks to the hardware encoders, exports are also incredibly fast on these systems. Perhaps the most visually striking change in the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros is its mini LED screen. The design of the screen here is remarkable in that it has the benefits of LED backlit LCDs, meaning an SDR brightness of 500 nits, while its many local dimming zones give it deep black levels that honestly are not too far away from the black levels you'd see in an OLED screen. As an XDR screen, it encompasses the P3 color gamut and it supports HDR video. In fact, in HDR mode, the screen can sustain a brightness of 1000 nits, with a peak brightness of 1600 nits, and that's way higher than the majority of computer displays. By the way, Apple's handling of HDR is really something else, as the desktop space is able to isolate HDR content to a specific region of the screen. This means that you don't need to worry about the desktop interfaces working in HDR, and it simplifies the experience all around. On the 14 inch model we've got here, the XDR screen has a resolution of 3024 by 1964, while its 16 inch sibling sits at 3456 by 2234. The result is a razor sharp crystal clear image on either model. 
MacBook users who have held on to their pre-2016 machines because they feared losing access to the multitude of ports can finally breathe a sigh of relief, as Apple has rethought the entire port layout of the MacBook Pro on the 14 and 16, while also continuing the I.O. advancements brought by USB-C. Instead of relying solely on USB-C, though, as Apple had done on previous models, the 2021 14-inch and 16-inch models bring back dedicated ports for HDMI, MagSafe 3, and, believe it or not, a 3.5mm headphone jack. Even the SDXC card slot has returned, making photo and video transfers much easier than the previous models. Now, as for the three USB-C ports that are still here, they're actually all Thunderbolt 4 capable and can each operate on the Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 protocols, along with display port functionality and even charging. Thanks to Rosetta 2, the M1 equipped MacBook Pros are backwards compatible with a wide range of apps originally designed for earlier Intel Macs. This is honestly an incredible feat given the vast difference between the platforms, and the performance hit in many circumstances is pretty minor. There are even some cases where performance exceeds the original platform. Two years in, however, most professional software now has native M1 optimized versions, and the resulting performance of software such as Final Cut Pro 10 and DaVinci Resolve Studio is almost hard to believe. A lot has changed in the MacBook line since the M1 debuted in 2020. While the new 13-inch MacBook Pro just launched with the new M2 processor, the 14-inch and 16-inch models that we've shown here have the most collective changes from the previous Intel models. If you're an existing MacBook Pro user who's been on the fence about upgrading, you should really look at everything that's been upgraded here. From the processor to the screen, and most importantly to a lot of people, the ports, the 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros are unbelievable machines for professionals and creatives alike. Let us know if you've been thinking of upgrading or what your favorite new feature is in the comments below. I'm Doug with B&H, and I'll see you next time.